Tulips are the most popular bulb in the country. Easy to grow, but needs to be planted before it gets too cold out there. Yep. All right. What's that word? Vernalization. 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 And that uh, the winter cold is what spurs them into emergence in flowers in the spring. So many times we get people that come in and they see their neighbor having tulips blooming. They say, do you have any tulips? And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> three months ago. <laughs> but uh, you've got to plant them now. You, you don't have a choice. So, again, go to your local garden center. Get those bulbs. Don't uh, And don't cheapen out. It's like, I saw them at Sam's Club, and it was a whole pack for $2. Yeah, it's like they're dried out, and they're undersized, and that you Bulbs are bought differently. You know, you buy top size bulbs. The bigger the bulb, the better the flower. So, again, I, I think that when you buy box store bulbs, it spoils. We lose more gardeners because of that. Because of that. Because all of a sudden, that I have no success with bulbs. So, tulips. I'm a Dutchman. I, I, sure. I Tulips are, yeah. yeah. Tulips. We tulips. Have one yeah, we, we plant. Every other year, we plant about 7,000 bulbs around bloomers. Uh, impressive. Like we're, this year will be year two. So we'll have to take them out of the ground and replant um, this so it's fall of 2025. So we've got second, uh, you get basically two years because they divide. Okay. Um, and it's important that, that you need to let them turn yellow. We're going to get into that in a second. Um, again, they need that cold temperature. And it's about 12 to 14 weeks of temperature below 55 degrees um, in order to bloom. Pick a full sun location and you can go under deciduous trees because, again, they're not going to have any leaves when their blooms and their blossoms are set. So so when that bud is set on top of that, uh, the tulip where you, everybody knows what that looks like, where it looks like a little, you know, looks like a little bulb on top, really. I mean, what do you call that? A when you see that. So, on the so well, they, when, on the top of the... Yeah, when you see the tulip flower, oh. you know, and it's that, you see it, it's like a big, you know, almost oh, like yeah. oval, like a, you know, it's the flower, it's the flower it's bud. Flower it's got to have some name. So, yeah. hey, call the hotline. If you know what that's called, besides a bud, you know, <laughs> we know that. But uh, call the hotline, let us know. It's 609-685-1880. Um... You want to make sure that they're not going to be water. Like, you can't put them in an area where it's wet. Uh, they will rot in the ground, and then all of a sudden, it's going to be it's going to be a mess. When you plant them, just like with your daffodils, you want to put in bulb tone from a spoma, or you want to use bone meal. Uh, tulips prefer a, a rich, well-draining soil, slightly acidic, but you don't have to worry about trying to mess with these. Um, less with their pH. I mean, it, most of the time between six and seven is what our soils are naturally. Anyway, um, use bumper crop when you're planting them. Uh, we do. And we use uh, bumper crop in some of our bigger areas. We're using uh, mushroom soil, and that just improves our existing soil just a little bit, makes it softer and easier to grow in. Uh, let's see. Tulips, here's some fun facts, okay? Uh, tulips. Are the flowers, Julio, you got to remember this. Tulips are the flowers linked to the 11th wedding anniversary. Oh, real? So, wow. the 11th wedding anniversary. Yeah, they came up with that. You get, hey, you know, it's like the diamond is 50th oh, anniversary, yeah. I think. Right. Yeah. Aaron, what, what anniversary are you at? This will be 16. 16. Yeah. All right. Better to see. It might be, it might be definite. <laughs> you <never know. laughs> anyway, um, you know how we had the the market crash, you know, and the yeah, that was scary. Um, believe it or not, the Dutch tulip bulb market bubble was the most fat, famous and studied asset bubble crashes of all time. And he, here's the thing: is that where? At the height of this thing, okay, the height of the bubble, that it was, tulips were so valued, let's just say, overvalued, really. They were selling for 10,000 guilders, which uh, that's uh, the dollars in 
in Holland. And it was equal to the value of a mansion on the Amsterdam Grand Canal. It, it, and it would just, and what happened is that I think it just went out. It's like, oh, I'm not paying. You know, once it hit that top of the bubble, the bubble popped. And it, and, and it really caused a, a major catastrophe in, uh, in Holland. Tulips were first introduced to Holland in 1593. And that, that bubble, you know, you think it's like, oh, that must have been recent. No, that bubble was in, in the uh, 1600s. So it was 1634, 1637. And normally toxic tulips can be eaten, but it's not common. But here's the deal. In, in, in World War II, a little bit of history, during the Second World War, that it had gotten so bad, and again, the, the Nazis were had taken over, um, and that it had just reached a it, it, a famine had basically taken over in the, a December freeze. It lasted several months, which was was extreme weather for the the, the time, you know, um, and. What they had was only thing is it was tulips and that they were eating the tulips to survive because all of their other crops that they normally would have were not available. So they began to sell them as food um, that doctors actually you have to, you know, you <laughs> it's like that old saying it's like you <laughs> They taste okay as long as you peel them right, <laughs> you know? and that's what this, yeah, that's the thing. Is the doctor said it's like all right, well, well, this is what you have to do so they're not poisonous. And they gave recipes like you know you remove the brown skin, you cut off the any of the the roots, and you got to cut the bulb in half from top to bottom, remove the flower stain, wash it, uh, and then to clear any of the soil, and you cook it for thirty minutes, and it it's like kind of like t- uh, potatoes. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it it even has like a little bit of an oniony taste. Don't eat your tulips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't go out and buy tulips. To but <laughs> every Dutch person knows on how bad that, that it was, you know, everybody knows the depression of the United States in, and that the same thing basically in the Netherlands because a lot of people were starving. But tulips are just the most beautiful flower. I, I find tulips, you know, we talked about daffodils and how daffodils welcome the spring. And they do. Daffodils welcome the spring, but they're kind of like almost like mono culture, mono, mono colored, where it adds like a block of color. Tulips themselves have variegations of red and, and on the same flower, like red and yellow or Parrot tulips look like peonies flowers almost. And they're all different kinds. They also bloom at different times. You could have tulips that will bloom in the early varieties in March, but you also have late varieties that are blooming in May. And the May varieties are actually more spectacular than the earlier varieties. And like, for instance, parrot tulips, like I mentioned, that look like peonies, they will flower late, but they need that vernalization don't if you're looking at tulips in the spring and you're having that you know i want to you know having a case of the joneses you know i want to keep up with the joneses and put tulips in and it's and it's in march or april it's too late they need the vernalization which is the freezing over the winter in order for them to bloom like they are and like they are at your neighbors so again don't think that you can get away if you go and you buy a tulip that's what 50 cents a piece a bulb or something like that or you have to buy like a six inch pot that has maybe three bulbs in it maybe five and that's going to be like eight bucks so again it's plant your bulbs in the fall okay don't plant them or think about planting them any other time it's really it's and and again it's Plant them in mass. Don't try to mix colors. I find that mixed colors are just not as dramatic as when you go and you plant like all red or all purple or all mixed. 
Um, you can plant different areas of your yard, but make sure that it's a, a big area that you're planting like 50 of the same color or something along those lines, as opposed to planting like yellow and just like mixing them all up. Not pretty. Yeah, not pretty. Not pretty. Or just a few, yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah no, no. And it's got to be, It's you're, you're planting them in a mass planting, not just a few by your doorstep. Yeah. Uh, it, it, does, it is not impressive when you're doing that. And that's a good rule of thumb for most fall planting bulbs. You know, for the spring flowering bulbs, you want them to, to be a big show, big show yeah. not just, a, you know, a few plants. Yeah. Bring in the show. Yep. Big time. Yep. You know, in our next segment, we're going to talk about pips and different varieties. Those you could probably do in a smaller, uh, a smaller amount. But again, tulips or daffodils, you want to do a pretty big mass planting, and it just looks so impressive. And and that again, it it's you know it'll make you happy yeah. coming home from work. Yeah, you, well. <laughs> you come home from work and uh, you see them, that. and yeah. they just like you know it's just um, it makes you happy. Yeah. It makes you happy. It does. 